Do you ask yourself, what would Jesus do every time you have to solve a math problem? Perfect. We can help you avoid calling the Lord's name in vain by watching this here video by Fort Ben Tutoring and Mr. Witt. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today's tutorial is going to be about finding the first derivative of natural exponential functions. All right, so let's check it out, okay? So here we have a few rules for finding the derivative or finding the differentiation of natural exponential functions. So our first rule states that when finding the first derivative with respect to x of a function of the form e to the x, then the derivative of that would just simply be e to the x. That's it. Then if you're trying to find the first derivative of a natural exponential function of the form e to the u, where u is a function of x, then the derivative of that would be e to the u times the derivative of u. Mm -hmm. That's right. So these are going to be the rules that we'll be using in today's lesson. All right, so let's go ahead and check out problem number one. In problem number one, we have f of x equals e to the 2x. So I know that I'm not just looking at e to the x. I'm actually looking at a function of x in the form of 2x. So I can say that my value of u is going to be equivalent to 2x. That being the case, I know that the derivative of 2x is 2. So going back to our rules, I know that finding the derivative of the function is going to be equivalent to my original function, that being e to the 2x times the derivative of u, which is going to be 2. So multiplying those together and simplifying this, you would most likely find this answer written as 2e to the 2x, and that's it. Done. That's the answer. Boxing it up, ladies and gentlemen, and there you have it. That's problem number one. So what you do first is you identify what your u is, that function of x that's an exponent. You find the derivative of that exponent, and then you multiply that derivative times the original natural exponential function. That's it. e to the u times u prime. Done. Let's move on to problem number two. All right, in problem number two, we have y equals e to the negative x squared. All right, so you're looking for y prime. You're going to try to solve for the first derivative here. So first of all, I know that my u is going to be negative x squared. The derivative of u is going to be negative 2x. All right, and I'm using the power rule in order to do that, okay? So if you're not familiar with this process, then you may want to check out our video, and I'll put a link right down here, about differentiation using the power rule. All right, so I found out my derivative of u, and I know that y prime, or that first derivative here of the function, is going to be equivalent to the original function itself, that e to the negative x squared times my derivative of u, which is going to be negative 2x. All right, so if I were to simplify this into a nice compact form here, I can go ahead and say that this positive times the negative will give me a negative result. I'll end up with 2x over e to the x squared, like so, getting rid of that negative exponent on that base of e. All right, so there you have it. I'm going to box it up. Gift wrapping the answers. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Negative 2x divided by e to the x squared. Done and done. On to problem number three. All right. In problem number three, we have y equals e to the negative 2x plus x squared. So once again, we want to identify that that function of x, that u, is going to be equivalent to negative 2x plus x squared. And then u prime, the derivative of u, is going to be negative 2 plus 2x. All right, just like that. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and write this as 2x minus 2 because it just looks more appealing to me. All right. That being the case, I can find the first derivative of our original problem by saying that it's going to equal to that e to the negative 2x plus x squared times the derivative of u, which is going to be 2x minus 2. All right. In order to simplify this further, we can rewrite our base of e as e to the opposite of 2x minus x squared. All right. And that's still going to be times the 2x minus 2. I did this to show that my exponent on my base is negative, And therefore, to get rid of this negative exponent, we can place it into the denominator. 
All right, so doing that will give us a result of 2x minus 2 all over e raised to the 2x minus x squared, and this would be your answer right here without any negative exponents. Done and done, ladies and gentlemen. That's problem number three. In problem number four, we have y equals e to the square root of x. So the first thing I want to do, especially because I know that my u value is going to be equivalent to the square root of x, is probably to rewrite this as x to the one half. So I rewrote this from radical notation into exponential notation. From there, finding u prime should be easier, and I'll know that I have one half x to the negative one half power for my derivative of u. All right, and I could get rid of that negative exponent right now, but I'm not. I'm going to leave it just the way it is for now. So deriving our original function, we have y prime equals to e to the square root of x times the derivative of u, which is going to be 1 half x to the negative 1 half power. All right, so that being the case, we definitely want to get rid of the negative exponents as well as change this exponential notation back into radical notation. So in doing that, we'll end up with e to the square root of x over 2x to the 1 half power. So that's how we begin by getting rid of that negative exponent. In my next step, I'll be converting this exponential notation into radical notation. And I'll have e to the square root of x over 2 times the square root of x. From here, you can go ahead and rationalize this by multiplying by the square root of x divided by the square root of x. And then multiplying straight across, I'll have e to the square root of x times the square root of x all over 2x in the denominator. And this is your answer here for problem number four. All right. In problem number five, we have y equals e to the negative three over x. So I'm identifying my u as negative three over x, and then I'm going to probably rewrite this as negative three x to the negative first power. So the derivative of u is going to be equivalent to 3x to the negative 2 power, all right, like so. Finding the first derivative, we have y prime equals to our original exponential function, which is going to be e to the negative 3 over x times our u prime value, which is going to be 3x to the negative 2 power. All right. From there, we're going to go ahead and get rid of any negative exponents. All right. So in doing so, I'll end up with 3 over e to the 3x times x to the second power. So our answer here is 3 divided by e to the 3 divided by x times x squared. And that's our answer without any negative exponents. Done and done. Problem number five. All right, on to the next problem. In problem six, we have y equals the natural log of e to the x squared. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if I want to take the derivative of this natural log, I know that in this case, my u value here is going to be e to the x squared, and my u prime value is going to be the derivative of this, which would be e to the x squared times 2x. I can then simplify this into 2xe to the x squared, all right, like so. Now, solving for our original problem, note that anytime you're taking the derivative of a natural log, it's going to be u prime over u. So if this is going to be our u prime value here, and this is going to be our u value, we can write our derivative as 2xe to the x squared over e to the x squared. All right. That being the case, these e to the x squareds will cancel out. So once they cancel out, ladies and gentlemen, you'll just be ending up with 2x. And this is your answer here. However, there's another way to approach this. If you put your logarithmic properties into play first, you should know that the natural log and this e will cancel out to give you a value of x squared. That being the case, ladies and gentlemen, if you take the derivative of y at this step using the power rule, y prime is equivalent to 2x, which is your answer. So one way to tackle many of the calculus problems is to identify your logarithmic properties first and natural logarithmic properties prior to deriving the problem. Done and done. Next problem. In problem number seven, we have y equals to x squared times e to the negative x. You should notice that this is two functions of x multiplying on one another. So we can identify the first function 
as being x squared and the second one as being e to the negative x. That being the case, we can apply the product rule in order to solve this problem. And if you need any practice doing the product rule, go ahead and click on that link right there and that'll show you how to do the product rule. So y prime equals the derivative of our f function, which is going to be 2x, times the g function as it is, which is e to the negative x, plus f as it is, which is x squared, times the derivative of g, which would be negative e to the negative x. All right? So that's the result of g prime multiplying on f. At this point, many textbooks and teachers would rather you factor this out to simplify it. I'm going to know that both of these terms have x e to the negative x as a common factor. That's going to leave me with 2 minus x as a result inside of the parentheses here. Next, you'll want to get rid of that negative exponent. So to simplify this further, we'll say that we have x times 2 minus x all over e to the x, and this is going to be our final result right here. Done and done. Red box in it. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's move on to problem number eight. In problem number eight, we have f of x equals e to the negative x times the natural log of x. Once again, we're given two functions of x that are multiplying on one another. Therefore, our parent rule will be the product rule, which is what we'll be doing first. We'll start by labeling the first function as f and the second function as g. All right. So I'll be applying that f and g into the product rule right here to the side. So doing that gives me f prime of x being equivalent to f prime, which is going to be a negative e to the negative x, times my g function, which is going to be the natural log of x, plus f as it is, which is e to the negative x, times g prime, which is going to be 1 over x. All right. So this is what I have thus far, ladies and gentlemen. Once I have this, I do note that I have the common factor of e to the negative x. And what I'll do is I'll actually just factor out a negative e to the negative x from both terms. That leaves me with the natural log of x minus 1 over x. All right. Getting a common denominator in the numerator here, we now can say that we have negative e to the negative x times x times the natural log of x over x minus 1 over x. Continuing on, we'll combine our terms inside the parentheses here. So I have negative e to the negative x times x times the natural log of x minus 1 over x, like so. Multiplying this out and getting rid of our negative exponent here, we'll end up with a negative x natural log of x minus 1 all over x e to the x. All right. So this is going to be our final result right here, ladies and gentlemen. This is the answer to problem number 8 red box in it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll have a problem worked out by our mascot, Kappa the Math Monkey. All right, check it out. Okay, is this thing on? Okay, here we go. Here in problem K1, that's for Kappa, by the way, we have f of x equals 3e to the 2x. So the first thing you want to do is identify that your u is going to be equal to 2x, and then your u prime is going to be 2. From there, the first derivative is going to be f prime of x equals to the original function, which is going to be 3e to the 2x times your u prime, which is 2. Then you'll be multiplying these together here, and so you'll have your f prime of x equals 6e to the 2x, and that's going to be your answer. All right, and then after that, you can go ahead and red box it. So red boxing it ladies and gentlemen so that completes this tutorial on differentiation the natural exponential functions this has been mr witt for ben tutoring and me kappa the math monkey and as always please rate comment and subscribe and if you're able please donate because that helps us bring you more free math tutorials from fort ben tutoring peace thanks for watching we feel great knowing that you got some help and you're safe and sound. 
Now, if you'd be so kind as to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Fort Ben Tutoring, and like us on Facebook, we'd be much obliged.